So if you're a wildlife photographer, you've most likely felt this feeling of always wanting to get closer to your subject. And then you start doing research about teleconverters. And maybe that is exactly what you're doing right now. Or you have a 70 to 200 2.8 lens that you love, but you recently got into wildlife photography and want to know if you really need to spend another $2,000 on another lens, or if you just simply can get a teleconverter. So I'm going to do my best to try and answer those questions about the 2x teleconverter and we're going to see how those lenses perform paired with this little magical thing. So uh, buckle up and let's go. The design of this thing is very sleek and you can clearly tell that it's designed for the Sony telephoto lenses. And you get this small little pouch for it which you can use for traveling and store it inside. Really nice. I love pouches or cases. Or what do you call this? I don't know. And since this is a 2x teleconverter, it means you double the focal length you pair it with. So the 70 to 200 becomes a 140 to 400 millimeters, and the 200 to 600 becomes a 400 to 1200 millimeters. But you also double the aperture value of the lens you pair it with, which means that the already pretty slow apertures of f6.3 on the 200 to 600 becomes f13 or f11 to 13 when you zoom in and so it's important to have lots of light when you're using this setup so on a cloudy day like this inside of the forest you will have a very high iso value the 70 to 200 2.8 Mark II, on the other hand, becomes 400 millimeters 5.6. And that is actually faster than what the 200 to 600 is at 400 millimeter, which is 6.3. So this becomes a very little handy shooter. And now that we have that out of the way, let's talk about what you're probably most interested in, the image quality. So I'm going to call the teleconverter TC2, because I cannot say the word teleconverter too many times. Uh, so this is a photo taken at 1200 millimeter with the TC2 at f13 with the 200 to 600 lens. And as you probably can see, the, the image turns out pretty soft and we don't see that typical contrasty and sharp image that we're used to with Sony lenses. And this photo is taken without the teleconverter at 600 millimeters and cropped in to 1200. And as you can tell, we have more details and contrast on this image. Sure, we have way less pixels than with the teleconverter photo, but here we can clearly tell a difference in the details in the photo. And with today's upscaling AI tools, I wouldn't say this is a big problem because you can get really nice results when the photos are sharp from the beginning. And the story goes on for every focal length in the zoom range. On the 70 to 200 2.8 Mark II lens, on the other hand, it's a completely different story. So this setup works like a charm and the hit rate of the photos are way higher than on the 200 to 600 in my opinion. And when combining the 70 to 200 with the teleconverter, I find the sharpness pretty similar to the 150 to 600 Sigma and Tamron lenses that I've been using in the past, which is actually really good. And as you can see with this setup, we have lots of more detail and most photos turn out sharp, but I wouldn't say it's flawless. Uh, some photos do miss focus and it isn't obviously as sharp as the 70 to 200 natively because that is one of the sharpest lenses I've ever tried. But something that is worth mentioning is that over the past weeks that I've been having this setup at home, I've chosen the 70 to 200 with the TC2 when I'm going out over the 200 to 600, obviously for trying it out for the video, but also because it's so lightweight and it's very, very nice to handle. I can fit it in my bag without problems and I almost don't notice that I have my camera packed with me. The 200 to 600 is way bigger and weighs a lot more. So that is a very, very big plus to this setup. And I'm very glad that the teleconverter works so good with the 70 to 200. So the autofocus on both lenses actually works surprisingly well, in my opinion. I thought it would be much worse because of what I've been reading online. Sure, it do hunts more than the lenses do natively because the autofocus on both of these lenses is just amazingly good but it doesn't hunt as much as i was expecting and and things like bird eye autofocus works as well which is really nice to see something that i've noticed though on both these setups is that capturing birds in flight is pretty tricky because that is a very tricky thing for the autofocus to do and so it seems like with the tc2 
it's not really possible to get those super crisp flying photos. I would say it's possible with the 70-200, but it's not nearly as good as without it. But it do work in some situations, and I have been able to get some shots in focus. But I wouldn't buy this setup if I primarily shoot birds in flight. So if you're a photographer that focuses on flying birds and you really want to capture action shots, I would go with the 70-200 natively without the adapter. So to sum things up, is it totally useless to use this with the 200-600? So I would say it's beneficial to use this setup if you really want to reach as far as possible and can compromise in the image quality. And if you film a lot, it's easier to get away with a soft video <laughs> than it is on photos. So if you want to film subjects that are far, far away with the full frame, 4K image without any pixelation, I can recommend to get the teleconverter. But for photos, I would say the 200 to 600 as it is performs better in both AF and you get better image quality when you zoom in, which means you can save those 550 bucks and buy maybe an AI software to upscale your photos or maybe a trip somewhere <laughs> to photograph. I don't know, save those money. But what about you guys with the 7200 2.8 Mark II G Master? That's a long name. Um, but if you already have the 7200 in your kit and that is the longest telephoto lens you have, I can recommend to get this teleconverter because it really do work good enough for most situations. And if you're after the most lightweight telephoto kit you can get, I think this might be it. So I can see myself choosing this setup when I need to hike a mountain or walk for a couple of kilometers and I don't want to carry around a large big lens <laughs> and end up in a hospital bed because I have a sore back and I really do love the portability of this setup and then we shouldn't forget that if you just take off the teleconverter we still have the native 70 to 200 2.8 which is fantastic in low light and way better than nothing if you find something at night or something to shoot I don't know but if you don't own the 70-200 yet and your main thing is to shoot bird and wildlife with it I would recommend to go with the 200-600 lens since it's both cheaper and you have way more reach than with the 70-200. So as usual with these videos it comes down to personal preference and budget and what works best for you. So that, my friends, is everything for this video. I hope I answered some of your questions. So will you get the teleconverter? Tell me down in the comments. And until next time, have a good one. Bye.